Okay. Okay, so um, it is my pleasure to um, welcome councillors to the uh, meeting of uh, the... No, sorry. I'll start again, actually. I've lost my way already. Jeff, it's going to be a long night. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome councillors to the um, April meeting of council, um, a special meeting in, in many ways. Uh, it's termed an ordinary meeting, but it's special because of the um, the way that we're uh, interacting today, which is something we've never ever done before, and that's um, via uh, Zoom technology. Uh, it's a bit of a learning curve for everyone, including myself, I'd have to say. So um, I just ask councillors to be uh, to be gentle with the chair as we go through, and we'll, we'll try and get through uh, what is a, a reasonably lengthy um, conversation this afternoon with some pretty weighty subjects. But before we get into the uh, meeting as such, you know, I'd just like to um, acknowledge why we are meeting like this and, and pay tribute to those people, um, whether we know them or not, but those people that are putting their lives on the line uh, to make sure that ordinary New Zealanders um, can have a, a good and, um, and fruitful life and putting themselves in harm's way of the, the coronavirus. Something that um, even a month ago, three weeks ago, none of us could probably even um, pronounce or understand what it was. Um, all of a sudden, it's become parlance in the in the language of the day, and uh, we're all sort of hanging out every lunchtime to just hear how uh, how the progress has happened uh, over the last 24 year, four hours in terms of new people coming along and potential deaths. And my heart goes out to those. Um, families that have uh, had members that have passed away because of that virus uh, and we wish them all the very best but particularly for those locally um, for the health workers the civil defense workers the uh, the police and the ambulance um, the likes of the, the social agencies like women's refuge and those ones going above and beyond um, and on council's behalf i say thank you to them um, have we got any apologies today? I don't think we have. I think we've got a, a full muster. So we'll just move on into the, um, the council agenda um, for real. And first item up is uh, declaration of any conflicts of interest the council may have uh, with regard to items on the agenda and conflicts that haven't already been declared by councillors. Is there anything that anybody needs to, um, to declare at this point in time? There's not. Um, if something becomes obvious during the meeting, then I'll just leave it up to your discretion, councillors, um, and hopefully you will declare that as we go along. Okay, so moving on to item three, which is the confirmation of the minutes and reports. Um, the confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary meeting of council held on Tuesday, 10 March. Would somebody like to move that that be seen as a true and correct record of that meeting? And can I... Um, yeah, some, can somebody Councillor McFarrell can move that. Okay, do I have a signal for that? Councillor Hofstede? Is there any alteration to that record? There's not. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. 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 Against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. I guess it'll take a, a few minutes to get into the rhythm of things, but um, at the moment I can, can see hands raised, so um, we'll go with that at the moment. Uh, but if it gets tricky, I'll ask you to raise your hands electronically so I do... Um, get to see everybody that wants to speak. So moving on to the next set of minutes, which is the confirmation of the minutes of the Extraordinary Meeting of Council held um, Monday 23 March. Would somebody like to move that be seen as a true and correct record of that meeting? Stuart, thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Uh, Neville, thank you. Is there any alteration required to that record? Does not. I'll put the motion, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, aye. the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Uh, item four. Oh, just, uh, Brett? Yeah, can I just ask a, a question of the Chief Executive, Your Worship, on that item? Mm -hmm. um, just with the, the change in legislation since we met, um, allowing electronic meetings to be part of full council, I just, just wonder about the, the merits or otherwise of having a quorum of two um, remain. Um, it may still be appropriate, but I'd just be interested in any comment the Chief Executive may have on that. Yeah. Chief Executive, do you want to make a comment on that? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship and Councillor Hofstede. Um, yes, look, the, the quorum of two really is uh, something that becomes automated as soon as you have a, a committee of council. 
So the council established an emergency committee, uh, principally because of uh, moving into uh, level four environment. Um, and by dint of that emergency, emergency committee, despite the council having the committee comprised of every elected member, it does actually give you the entitlement, not that you have to use it, of having a quorum of two. Um, I'm not, not in clear on that um, resolution was, oh, sorry, I was, because it's the, the committee was to be in place until alert, alert level four was uplifted. And then I dare say the situation will be reviewed. But the quorum is an automated provision in the um, Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act that any committee of the council has a quorum of just two members, as distinct from uh, when it's the full council, it has to be at least half the elected members. Okay, do you comfortable with that, Councillor Hosted? You are, that's great. And that uh, emergency committee will stay in place until level four, um, <coughs> the Act to level three or two. Okay, um, moving on then to item four, which is uh, urgent late business. Is there any urgent late business councillors wish to table at this point in time? I'm not aware of any. Okay, thank you. Um, item five, the financial report, and we have a report from our accountant, Donna. Um, I think it's reasonably straightforward, but Donna, do you want to just talk us through this, please? Um, certainly, Your Worship. Um, I'd just like to firstly point out a couple of things. Um, on the front page of the report, I have incorrectly um, put in a figure um, where it says the total revenue is lower than budget by $526,000. It should, in fact, state total revenue is higher than budget by $85,000. Um, my apologies for getting that one incorrect. Um, and I'd also just like to note that since the date of this financial report, the world has fundamentally changed. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore we will see some changes to our figures through the coming months. Um, so um, total revenue is higher than budget by $85,000 um, with total revenue um, expenses higher than budget by $743,000 and an overall $657,000 over budget. Um, NZTA recoveries are behind by $526,000 and this is the main driver behind this variance. The higher depreciation and insurance costs along with the regulatory department continue to impact on the budgets as well. And um, flooding response expenses are still coming in and are not included in the reported expenditure as the funding options are still being investigated. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Right, so the NZTA um, shortfall, is that, is that a timing issue? Um, so a lot of it's actually due to the Pyramid Bridge, um, whereas that has come under budget. So, um, right. okay. yeah. Right. And with regard to the flooding costs, we feel comfortable we've got uh, those covered, have we? Um, so at the moment, I'm working through the actual welfare costs, which are 100% covered. Um, the insurance companies have been um, in discussions with us for some other um, items, and we are also just in discussions with the National Emergency Management Agency in regards to government funding um, for some of our costs, like the landfill. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Stuart? And then Brett and uh, good question. inventories. We've got MVM industrial hub spare parts or replacement parts. What I didn't think we own plant. We do. We do. Mm. Um, so we have because of the um, the type of items that are required to run the part the plant, we actually have to have them in stock because it does take a lot of time to actually bring them in from overseas, I believe. Mm. So just on that um, point, uh, Mr. Chief Executive, do you just want to give a give councillors a reminder of just the situation with regarding the, the ownership and the uh, costs of that of that plant? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. The, the, the it's it is called quite rightly the MVM um, Industrial Hub. Uh, MVM have um, they have a lot of rights, but they don't extend to ownership. Uh, it was paid for by MVM. 
um, MVM uh, looked after and paid for and owns the pipeline leading to the industrial hub. Um, but the hub itself is council owned and operated. Uh, the operations are fully funded by uh, MVM, courtesy of a, um, a waste water agreement. Um, and MVM also has under the agreement um, rights of, um, to a degree of exclusivity in terms of using that particular facility. Um, it, it potentially could be expanded for another user, potentially I say, uh, but that would be the subject of a separate um, consultation and conversation with MVM. But ownership of the asset is certainly in the council's uh, books. Um, Brett? Yeah, hey, thanks Donna, that's a, that's a pretty comprehensive report, so I appreciate that. I've just got two questions. My first one relates to the regulatory department being 161,000 unfavourable. Is, is, is that addressed and picked up in our, our current annual plan budgets that you're working on in terms of addressing or is that something we're going to have as an ongoing issue? Um, so most of it has been picked up. Um, so a lot of it's to do with um, the change in the management of the planning department. So it's bringing in um, our new planning manager, which wasn't in this year's annual plan. Um, and also, a new, <coughs> I think, an adjustment with just the whole team. So I believe um, having... Um, an administrator as well as having an actual planning officer um, there as well. So they've all been picked up in the, the annual plan going forward. Thank you. My second question relates to your suspense account. I have a personal dread of suspense accounts. Um, <laughs> council heard that expenditure. I realise there's uncertainty about its funding, but I'd really be in favour of it in future being reported in that P&L as an expense, maybe as a separate line item because, uh, yeah, Perils of suspense accounts are probably pretty well known to you as well, but that's just my personal view, but that would be more comfortable for me, really. Um, is, is, is that going to be addressed quickly in terms of clearing of that suspense account, or is that something that we're going to have to wait some time for in terms of its, uh, its funding? So I'm hopeful that um, quite a lot of what's currently in there will be um, getting addressed quite quickly. Um, but of course there are a few unknowns um, and especially where to put those costs as well. Um, so there's all sorts of different um, costs in there that might not have an appropriate place to put just yet. Okay, so could we perhaps agree on a timeline that it's appropriate to hold it in suspense before it does hit the p &L as an expense? Yes, so yeah. Cool. It's, it's, it's in the balance sheet in terms of an accrual? Um, not at this point. Uh, so it is in the balance sheet. Um, it does go through in there. That's where all the suspense accounts are held, are in the balance sheet. Right. Sorry. I'll leave that with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Um, Glennis? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Uh, Donna, I'm just wondering, do you have any idea whether the lockdown is going to have a negative or a positive impact on the budget? And I'm thinking <clears throat> in terms of parks and reserves and roading and not, not having the work out there on the roading and that could affect our subsidies. Um. I'm not actually too sure, to be perfectly honest. Um, I don't know if there's been any work being carried out on roading as an, an emergency or for safety. Um, that still could be getting carried on. Um, that would be a question for um, Peter Sandring. Um, but I don't think that those areas would necessarily affect the budget too much in the long term. Um, it would be more our revenue collection side through um, the pools and the regulatory functions that we might see a downturn on. Yeah, mm. thanks, thanks, Donna, and, and thanks, Glennis. I think it's a good, good question. I wonder uh, if the chief executive could perhaps give us a bit of more of a, a global view of where he sees um, what we're currently going through um, having a, an, a likely early impact on council. Mm. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. I think, uh, the, as Donna has correctly um, alluded to, 
it's really the revenue side of the equation that I see the, the pressure points and the, and the cost as well, but more to do with the fact that um, I can see regulatory, for example, um, even if we do come out of level four uh, on schedule next Wednesday, for example, I don't think we're going to be springing back to life uh, in pre-COVID-19 uh, developmental conditions, both in terms of building consents and resource consents. And then you've got the, the pool where a, a decent amount of um, revenue is relied upon um, to offset the ratepayer input. Uh, and the pool, there's no guarantee that the pool will be able to open level three. Um, the Prime Minister, of course, is going to be making announcements uh, tomorrow afternoon about what Level 3 might mean. Uh, and that will be obviously watched uh, with interest and listened to with interest by everyone in New Zealand. And for us, it's the, can, can we open the pool? Uh, if not, under Level 3, uh, that situation will need to be um, carefully considered uh, in the overall impact it may be having on the council's business. The likes of parks and reserves, for example, fundamentally, it's uh, the staff have been redeployed where we can. Uh, there's no um, revenue or expenditure hits apart from the fact that the service isn't being delivered. Uh, there's gardens with weeds in them uh, and there's grass that has the autumn flush um, uh, effect and uh, but as Ian Soper has reported to at management meetings look uh, if they can get back to it and logic would suggest that that should be uplifted if, if now uh, golf courses are being able to be maintained I would argue quite compellingly I would think that um, parks and reserves in terms of mowing should be able to be done so there are I think there's, there's going to be pockets of discomfort um, and obviously, we're making what, that's a watching brief in terms of uh, rating income, uh, people's ability to pay, and what the council may need to um, uh, come up with in terms of policies and processes that actually facilitate some ease in which those things can be managed. Uh, and um, anyone requiring some transitional arrangements can access them. So that those type of um, matters currently being thought about and no doubt will um, flow through into some some reports and some suggestions in the coming weeks to council. Mm. Thanks um, Steve and I guess you yeah, Glenn a good question. Will undoubtedly have uh, an effect? Uh, it's probably too early to tell just what that effect uh, is going to be. Here. Um, but Peter and, and Ian just from a Parks and Reserves perspective and uh, from a roading perspective is there anything you want to add to uh, those comments? Um, for your honour, it's just, um, pretty much uh, roading just uh, is carrying on as business as usual uh, to, to a certain extent as far as the funding goes. There'll be no sort of thing, nothing held back from us. I mean, the funding's still available. We'll just, we'll just catch up that we'll have to sort of um, carry out when we come out of us. Mm. Yep. Ian? And uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Look, the um, the Parks and Reserves uh, activity, whilst there is some long grass uh, around some weeds in some of the garden plots, we are quietly confident that when we see a level three situation occurring, that we will be able to get back, um, as Steve rightly pointed out, for some mower operators and cabs and things like that that are reasonably secure, but still uh, we'll get some of the work uh, caught up on. But we're confident that that'll, that'll occur shortly. Okay, thank you. Right, we're still on the uh, financial report. Are there any other questions or queries or comments? Um, John, John go on. Yeah, just one question was going back to the MVM um, parts. Is that um, classed as capital and are we refunded by MVM for that capital or is it classed as running costs and just passed on as running costs at the end of the year? Um, so my understanding is that it's all included in their operating expenditure, which um, is organised via Matt's department um, through a wash up at the end of the year. So Matt, do you want to make any comment to that? Thank you, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, I will. I'd, I'll have to just double check that we are. Um, claiming new, uh, the inventory carrying costs, but um, certainly yeah, the, the trade waste agreement is, is um, um, full cost recovery. Um, but I'll just have to confirm around those inventory carrying costs. 
Thank you. So, um, Brahman, sorry, I missed your hand. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, a good report, Donna. Thank you. I'd possibly just uh, comment. It was not as good to see that the clean air loans are still being uplifted, which is great. Um, and I was just wondering, back to the pool complex, have you any idea of the loss of income over maybe, say, like a month of non-use? Um, unfortunately, I have not um, looked into that just yet. Um, but it is something that I can look forward into for you for the next report I put together. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions, queries? Would somebody like to move the recommendation then uh, on item on page 17? Councillor Heister, do you have a second of that? Councillor Gardon, thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? Put that motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. So we'll move on then to um, item six, which is the um, report from Parks and uh, Recreation Manager Ian Soper, uh, just with regard to uh, future use of 67 Wigan Street, uh, which is adjacent to the AMP grounds. So you have a, a report uh, before you. Um, Ian, do you want to talk to us? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, this has really just um, come about with the letter received uh, for the council just prior to the end of last financial year in December around the applications that had come and were going to the Provincial Growth Fund. So that didn't find favour there. So we were left in the situation of having to um, two things. Firstly, report that decision back to you, the council. And secondly, then flag what we thought um, the future could be for the site, and then to give the council some options around um, gauging its thinking on how it saw that site uh, going forward. And with the uh, recommendation also including an opportunity for uh, the canvassing of community views around that as well. Uh, but I'm happy to take questions on that, Your Worship. Okay, um, open for discussion. Mr. Chief Executive, do you want to make any comment before we get into a discussion? Uh, um, not specifically, Your Worship, only I think, uh, I don't think councillors need to be pressured into coming up with a hard and fast decision tonight. Uh, the key word here is uh, perhaps guidance and indicative direction. And, um, you know, potentially if the councillors um, need more time, they should feel free to take that time. We just want to bring it forward to you uh, as it's a, um, an ongoing um, issue of some uncertainty that it would be nice at some point in time to get a bit of clarity around. And it was purchased on the, on the basis that it was seen as a good investment at the time without a particular uh, purpose yep. in mind. Um, yep. But yeah, thank you. So open for discussion and I've got hand, I've got Brett. Yeah, no, thanks for the report. I, I just think the, the world's fundamentally changed since, since the council asked for feedback on this. I think just in the current economic climate with the uncertainty out there, um, you know, we don't know where unemployment's heading, tourism opportunities, community fund is ability to fund. I think we should just, just sit tight for, for a moment, just to show our community that we, you know, we're just recognising where we are at, uh, where they're at right now. And perhaps we could just bring this up again um, in terms of... Uh, canvassing the community, you know, maybe review it in six months' time just to see how the, how the playing field unfolded. I, I just, I'm just reluctant to go out there with some aspirational ideas that may cost the ratepayers some money right now. So I, guess, I guess from what I'm hearing you saying, you're suggesting we should probably note the report and um, then yeah. for the canvassing of the community, uh, consider what action might be appropriate. Um, it's very much how you worship. <laughs> I... Um, See Doug and Nikki have got their hands up. So Doug, do you want to? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, I totally agree with Councillor Hoisted's uh, comments there. Um, the aspirations of some in the community may be may have been towards the equestrian hub, but I believe it needs to be canvassed towards the entire community. Um, also, whatever we do with that, it's got to be a standalone project. It has to be. Uh, you know, all the ongoing costs, repairs and maintenance, employment, whatever it is in there, it, it can't come out of rate pass. It's got to be 
Um, so the actual wording of the recommendations, I believe, pretty pretty spot on, is to be determined in the future on a case by case. We don't jump; we just uh, uh, just go slowly on this one. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, I thoroughly agree. Um, at the moment, it wouldn't be at all appropriate to um, to put this out for consultation. I, I agree that it needs to be put on the back burner. Uh, it is something that we can get out and dust off in the future um, when finances and the economy looks uh, a little bit better and, the, and there's more prospects for it. So I think we should just sit on the land. Okay. So, uh, John. Just, I had a couple of thoughts. I just had a reservation about um, the second part where it fits within the boundaries and limitations of the Reserve Act 1977. What does that mean? Does it mean it's locked in under reserve limitations or is it pre for any use? And the second question I'd like to put has there been any more thought to subdivision of land against the two road boundaries for housing? I know it is a contaminated site, but there is work that could be done to prove that the outside edges are not contaminated. And there could be sort of 13 to 15 sections subdivided off, leaving two and a half hectares of the four hectares that could be sold and uh, rent and rates could be collected from those in the future. I'm not sure who's going to answer that, but to my knowledge, there hasn't been any work done on those items that, that you have raised. And I am aware that previous owners had um, looked at subdivision in that area. And in fact, I think well, I did see a, a subdivision plan of the area. So yes, you, there are areas that can be um, used for residential, but uh, certainly council hasn't, um, hasn't gone down that track as far as I'm aware. Steve, do you yeah. want to make a comment there? Uh, yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, in terms of the first question, Councillor Gardine, um, that subject, um, a Reserve Act um, classification does limit your ability. It becomes a reserve and therefore is only available for um, recreational uh, type use. Um, that's something the council may or may not want to do. Um, and But that's not a, a recommendation that's before you tonight. It's just something to, to perhaps think about. To be fair, I think the council, when we bought the land, suspected that it was probably going to be used more for some future recreational pursuit uh, than intensive uh, development for residential purposes. As Worship has said, look, um, and as Councillor Gowdon has acknowledged, it, the, the property does have uh, limitations in regard to not only contaminated land, but areas that you can't build on because there were um, uh, tunnels under the ground that were filled in with rubble. Um, but that's not to say that it's not impossible, but um, like a lot of things, um, it would also be the question as to how that came about, what the council's role, if any, would be. Um, and so at this point in time, all those potential uh, uses uh, are still um, could, could be accessed if the economy uh, improves or there's a direction from the community that the council should take a certain stance. So. But I think we need to acknowledge that. I couldn't see intensive residential development down there given the number of limitations, but uh, a lightly approached uh, development with bigger allotments may, may potentially be possible. Um, but like a lot of things, it has to stack up economically. Okay, so um, my sense is that the council have a mind that we should note and receive the report and um, uh, when and if they arise, opportunities should be considered on the merit at the time. Uh, is that right? Would somebody like to move that way? Doug, thank you. Do I have a signal for that? Councillor Hostead, thank you. Um, is there any discussion? If there's not, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, aye. against the motion. So those against the motion, no raise their hand, please. Okay, the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, right. Let's see, we'll move on then to item seven, and we have a report from the Matera Community Board from Monday the 16th of March. Seems like a different world um, but back then. Um, but it's there for um, receipt. 
uh, and um, ratification of recommendations that are contained within the report. So, uh, does you, uh, this is um, Susan, is it? Uh, Administration Manager, do you want to make any comment on the report? Thank you, Worship. No, there's nothing um, unless it's specifically. Okay, right. On. Any councillors got any questions or queries? Um, Doug? Thanks, um, Your Worship. Um, just a query on uh, the Culling Terrace walkway. Um, it was recommended that um, the funding consideration for 200,000 per, oh, sorry, 20,000 per annum. So over the long term plan, it'll be $200,000. Just a query do we still have PD workers? The old PD period pension people that used to go around and do community service and that sort of thing. Do we, do we still, or can we still tap into that as we used to? I, okay, I think we, there, you know, Ian, do you want to make a comment there? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, look, directly in, in terms of the PD workers, we used to get a lot of help uh, in different areas of the reserves uh, from the PD department. Uh, Dollamore Park was one particular recipient that we used to get a lot of help with, but at the moment we've probably for the last year, 15 months, we've had very little and it's hard to get them um, actually on site. Uh, there is some that do come uh, to the AMP grounds and staff there utilise some of their help from time to time, but it's, it's certainly nowhere like it, what it used to be where you would have a couple of teams uh, two or three times a week on a certain site. Um, and that has really been ruled out as an option for working in that particular site for, for those reasons. Thanks, Ian. Cheers. Okay, any other questions or comments on the Matera Community Board report? Um, Neville, as a Community Board member, do you have any thoughts do you want to share? Uh, no, I'm right. Your Worship, I I've, uh, was a little, little bit late in... in uh, attending the meeting but everything seemed to be okay uh it was just one or two queries about the the matara x swimming pool um uh, we're going to once we get back to in the swing of things again we're, we're going to have a bit of a um, workshop and discuss what we're going to bring forward to council in regards to that building etc uh looking at looking at the council's guidelines you know what the councillors may want to do in the future with it etc so that was about the only main uh, thing uh, and of course our ongoing projects um, have come to a bit of a hold at the moment but we're still in um, in uh, working on the sideline at the sideline with those those two projects that uh, we want to try and push forward so uh, thank you uh, Neville and with that in mind do you want to move the two recommendations there that it be received and um, the recommendations within uh, be right oh. I'll move that, Your Worship. Do I have a seconder for that? Uh, can, no. can I have a seconder for that, please? Oh, Councillor Highstead, thank you. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, aye. the motion is carried. Thank you. Excuse Thank me, Your Worship. Yeah. Did it have raised? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, no. it, it was a question... Did, did you, Nikki? <laughs> yeah, through Your Worship. It was a question about the potential for the um, old railway station building uh, with COVID-19 and the uh, extended hold up of being able to do anything with this building at the moment, um, how does that place the community board as a whole for being able to reach their different uh, project destinations? Um, so, which lobby dance? Would you like me to answer that, Your Worship? So, is that contained within the report? Um, uh, I don't think it is, is it? No. No, it's not. So, um, so it's a question outside the report, um, and it's probably um, a little bit early to, to make any comment on that one, I, I would have thought. Um, um, and I know yeah. that from a, from a council yeah. perspective, generally, it's, it's going to be pretty hard to... Just pick where where the priorities and where the work that needs to be done is done, and what things uh, perhaps get put back on the back burner a little bit more. Yeah, Worship, can I? Yeah. 
it was just, um, I, I think Nikki might have been uh, looking at the section five under general when I had brought out the discussion about the land purchase for the shifting of the Matera railway station to that particular place. Oh, um, so yeah, there is there. Sorry. And yes, so um, as I said before, everything is sort of put on hold at the, currently at the moment until such time as everything comes 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 together and comes right. Um, we're in no rush at the moment to to push this issue along. Um, everyone's in the same boat, so we're just holding fire, standing in line just like everybody else. Okay. Thank uh, you. Glennis, did you have a question? Oh, I just I just had a, um, Your Worship, I'd just like to say to Neville that I know that um, Doc are looking for work for some of their employees because of the downturn in tourism. Would it, be, it could be worth approaching them um, just to see if they did have any people that they could put you away. Yeah, thanks, Glenis. Um, as, as I said, I've been uh, been in discussion with Alan over the, you know, like we've been in, in discussion over the last uh, two or three weeks in, uh, about our projects. And um, we're having a, we'll have a sit down uh, as soon as everything comes right um, and a debrief, get together, um, have a plan of action to, to go forward. And uh, that's one of the possibilities that, that would be like to pursue with you later on. Thanks, Glenis. Great. Thank you. And look, I'm sorry, uh, Nikki and Dennis, for missing that. Um, Susan, just remind me, did you put that motion? Um, yes, we did. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Right. We'll move on then to item um, eight, which is uh, the six monthly update. In fact, I think this is the first six monthly update we've had from, from Great South uh, in this format anyway. Um, an organisation that. Um, and uh, an organisation that's been doing an awful lot to come up to speed and be in a place where uh, it can can help um, drive uh, not just this area but the whole South and economy. And there's certainly an awful lot there to read uh, and to um, to take up. But I would have to say that since this report has been published, then uh, as has been mentioned a couple of times already, the world's changed and their focus is, um, hasn't shifted uh, in totality from a lot of what we're reading here, but really it's about um, working in recovery uh, right across the province, um, particularly in the tourism uh, side, but not just in tourism. Certainly business in general is uh, needing a lot of work, so a lot of the focus is going in there. But Steve, do you want to talk to the report? Yeah, as you say, uh, Your Worship. Look, this is um, it was um, put up to you just so you you can you can become familiar with what Great South is about and what it's uh, been doing uh, in getting itself onto a firm launching pad. But this is, as Your Worship said, is like a, a quaint insight into uh, history, a world that uh, we've left behind. Really, um, what I can tell you though is that there is going to be a revised statement of intent that will come uh, or needs to be approved by the council by the end of this month. I've yet to receive it, but it will be most likely a part of an extraordinary council meeting. We need to uh, call uh, to have that approved uh, to keep uh, faith with the timetabling for Great South, but it will be um, a lot different than what it was. There was a draft prepared pre the uh, COVID-19 lockdown that has since been um, pushed to one side and, and with a, um, an expectation from the councils that Great South would go back and um, really uh, revise it completely to take um, account of the change in, in, of the world we're dealing with um, and likely to be focusing a lot more around business support um, and a lot less around tourism due to the fact that tourism is one industry that is um, going to take some time particularly international tourism, to come right. But uh, we can expect something to, to emerge in the next coming days, uh, and then that will be before you for consideration, um, to say, within about, about a week. Right. Okay, so um, this report is open for discussion. Does anybody wants to make any comment uh, at all? Uh, Bronwyn? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just noticed the numbers, and I know it's after the horses bolted, but they had $692 million down as the total tourism spend 
And it's just a pity that they actually hadn't broken that down to a, with a percentage of the domestic market. Um, as I say, the horse is bolted, but um, in future, maybe that might that would also be good for us to be able to see domestic and eventually um, international tourism, so we can see if there's a steady increase in that. Mm. Yeah, you were oh, looking at their budget. It's it's heavily weighted towards increase in tourism, increase mm. in budget, business development, and events. So it's uh, it's a completely new day, and I I would think now that possibly if there's going to be any in, increase in tourism, it may come from domestic tourism, oh. people further north looking to. Uh, uh, have a bit of an adventure in, in Southland, but I think it will be very conservative times for, for, for Great South. And uh, but they do have um, they do have uh, considerable assets and people of ability. So you know, like us all, they'll have to pull through, and I'm sure they will. Mm. Thank you. Um, so Neville, did you want to make that? Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just see that um, they had prepared for nine conferences and resulting in seven being secured. You wouldn't have any uh, dates. Have we missed some or not? Or is there any that we might be able to um, help them out with in, uh, in that aspect? Do you know of? Are they internal uh, conferences or are they overseas ones coming in? I don't know. I've got my head. I'm sorry. Um, I've never stabbed that. It's just going on the activity adventure they were mainly domestic uh, conferencing as opposed to things coming from overseas i'd assume that that's the same look i think that the conference market is pretty much out of bounds at the moment anyway and probably will be that way until i would say well into the later part of this year um so it's yeah the report is completely out of date um the expectations of councils across the the province, I think, is going to be quite different to what it has been in the past. Um, been a lot of discussion going on with Great South over the last 10 days, uh, working with them to get them to revise uh, what their plans will be and what their intent for the uh, next year will be. And I think, well, I've got no doubt that they understand the challenges they've got. Um, they understand our need for them to uh, perform and perform well. Uh, and I look forward to just seeing what that intent looks like when it's um, when it's written down. Okay, um, does anybody else want to make a comment there? No. Okay, we'll move on then. Um, so, would somebody like to move that it be received, please? I'll move. Um, moved. Cliff seconded. Glennis. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? There's not. Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. The, mo the motion is carried. Uh, okay, we'll move on then to item nine, and it is the uh, great uh, the grants subcommittee report, and we have a, a report here from the admin manager um, and the grants committee. It on the, the 19th of March to consider a number of grants and there's some recommendations here for us to uh, to consider. Um, so any comment, Susan, from that one on the admin side? Uh, not from me, Your Worship. I'll prefer to the chair of that subcommittee, Councillor Grant. Do you want to make any comment on this one before yes. we have a discussion? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, no, a very good report written by our corporate support officer, Gillian Small. Uh, she caught exactly what was said, basically. Uh, we had three annual submitters, uh, the Safe in the South, the Hokanui Fashion Awards, and the Terra School Bus Transport this morning, lessons. And we had a new um, submitter who was the Gore Corpse Multiplayer Video Gaming. Um, so as you can see, uh, the report uh, says it all, basically. So. Um, uh, before you get into the discussion, I'll, I'll, I'll move recommendation. And so we've got a, a mover of the uh, mover that it be received and the recommendations contained within the report be ratified. Is there a second for that? I have a second for that, Councillor Hyset. Thank you. 
Well, it's open for discussion uh, and or alteration. Is there any other for Councillor Hosted? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. I just want to pick up a point that was made uh, on the last item around the Youth Council um, having some input to funding or some funding. I realise it's not a grants committee issue, but I think it's probably a very good point that um, this is a very youth-centric item, some, one that many of us wouldn't understand, but probably just an example where we could empower the Youth Council to, to have some, some input in the community. Just a comment. <clears throat> Yeah, it's probably not a, not a silly idea, um, and that well, that one is a, a very youth centric um, issue. I heard about that. Um, any other comment? Uh, or oh, Councillor Grant? Sorry, don't take. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Yeah, um, it was it was brought to my attention last year by a couple of the youth councillors who are no longer there, but they actually. I don't know if they asked for a budget, but they, they put forward that could we operate off a budget because we don't know what our budget is. And uh, I don't know exactly, I wasn't at the meeting, but this is what I was told by, by two of these young, young men, uh, or people, should I say. Uh, and I thought it, it too was a great idea. Uh, give them a budget, let them, there's your budget for the year, work out what you want to do. Um, it's, it's perfect for this sort of thing. But also, um, uh, it was it would have been perfect for this uh, this last application, as Councillor High said. Um, said. Thanks, Trish. Mm. Okay, um, Councillor Reid, did I see your hand up? Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Susan will probably know more about this than most of us, but um, maybe two years ago, the Youth Council um, actually did work with James Ward in um, hosting an event in the old Round Table Hall. And um, it was very successful, and he's, he's very, very good with the kids. Um, and maybe that's the thing with during Youth Week that they could pick up and run with and help him um, just introduce it to other, other children in the area. Mm. Good point. Um, Glennis, you had a comment? Are oh, you on mute, sir? Glennis? No, you're back on. Oh, my God. Right now. Am I right now? Yep. Okay. Um, I thought James's project was very worthwhile, and I do know now that the um, that Lisa on Hakanui Huanui is working with James, um, and and I think it it could look into the future. I think it could work out quite well. Yep. Um, and look, personally. Um, I think that uh, the enthusiasm and the energy that um, that particular individual brings is something that we need to harness and, and use in our community as much as we possibly can. I, I know it's it's a it's an area that I, I would just shy away from completely. I don't know anything about it. Don't want to know anything about it. But I know that that's uh, an area where uh, those individuals, particularly youth with challenge, uh, flock to, uh, relate to. And uh, we need to be making sure that we've got uh, as good a connection as we possibly can with them. Uh, I take the point that Glennis has raised uh, with regard to Whakanui um, Huanui being connected. And I'm hopeful that that will be a, a long-term relationship. And, and it could, um, could go in a number of different directions there, I think. So, Councillor Hosting? Yeah, just, just wonder, at, at <clears throat> sometime in the future, could we ask for a report from the Chief Executive just canvassing the opportunity to grant the Youth Council some form of budget and how that may operate. Yes. Did you get that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not on mute. I'm just wondering if we could ask for a report from the Chief Executive sometime in the future on, on that issue of granting a budget to the Youth Council, how that may operate, what would be appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, no, good idea. And there's almost two issues here, really, isn't it? There's the the um, recommendations we're considering, but uh, aside to that, is an input into um, into um, particular issues or opportunities like this from the youth council and, and how they are situated to take advantage of those. Um, did I see somebody else's hand? Oh, Neville. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, during that meeting, and, and as I said, that I. Um, had said that there was no current money set aside for the for the youth council, 
and our own councillor Nick Grant uh, could possibly be involved in this and in, in, uh, asking the questions to the youth um, what sort of money that they may require and help help perhaps Steve with a, a report to bring back to council and we can make a sessions from there. Okay, um, so is there any other comment? We've got a, a mover and a seconder for the report. We've had the suggestion that um, a um, paper be compiled um, by the Chief Executive to come back to Council uh, funding opportunities for the Youth Council and these uh, that come up. So if there's any further discussion on that one, I'm going to Put that motion. Please say aye. Aye. Okay. The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Right. Um, so I think that pretty much brings us to the end of the open section of the committee um, of the council. I would just make note: um, it's not doesn't form part of this meeting, but um, it came out with the agendas or close to the agendas was the community services bulletin um, and again while it was compiled at a different time um, than we're in now uh, it's just great to see the work that's going on in this community um, and a lot of it being driven by by council staff um, so i just say thank you um, for all those um, particular inputs the, the work that council staff do um, interesting survey there on the library um, so all of that is available for uh, anybody that wants to peruse it on the council website, I assume. Is that right? Um, yes, it is right. Um, but just before we um, close the open section of the meeting, is there anybody who wants to make any comment on anything that is in the community bulletin? This is not okay. Righto. Um, so then um, we'll move into um, part B of, uh, of the council. I'll, I'll move that council move into to part B uh, to uh, confirm and consider uh, the various items that we have listed there. Do I have a seconder for that? I'll second that, Your Worship. Seconded, Councillor Bolger. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Um, so we're now in part B.